Thank you. Um, it's been a pleasure to be a part of this symposium and to learn from each of the presentations that we've been treated to today. Um, I'm particularly thankful to uh, Dr. Schneider and to Letty for opening up a discussion of Tissot's treatment of female stories as it leads perfectly into what I would like to touch on today. Um, okay, so as I first viewed the works in um, this exhibit, I one of the images that I was just struck by um, was Jephthah's daughter. Um, you may recognize it from the programs and posters for the symposium. Um, without any prior knowledge of the biblical account, I was in awe of the aesthetic beauty of the woman's gesture, the soft gaze of her facial expression, details of the costuming, um, and I, ever since my first encounter with the work, um, it's intrigued me and instilled in me a desire to uncover its layers of meaning. Um, I began by learning about the biblical story upon which the work is based. Um, Tissot actually devotes three works in his series to the ambiguous stories of Jephthah's daughter, um, and I'll briefly, briefly explain the sequence of events. So Jephthah was an Israelite judge who led a military campaign against the Ammonites. And before the battle, he made a hasty vow with God that if he would grant Israel victory, um, Jephthah would offer a sacrifice of the first creature that greeted him when he returned home, expecting this to be an animal. However, when he returns home, as seen in, in Tissot's first image, um, he sees his daughter and only child approaching him from the city, dancing and playing timbrels with her attendants in celebration of the father's safe return home. Uh, the scriptural record is ambiguous as to whether her life was required or if she was given to the service of the Lord. Um, but regardless, she honored her father's covenant and only requested time to mourn her virginity. Um, to me, Tissot's choice to dedicate three paintings to a passage that only occupies a handful of verses in the Old Testament uh, seems to indicate a special interest in the story. When I did some research, it became clear that Tissot was not, only, not the only artist of his time with an interest in this episode. Um, an examination of the works of other 19th century artists reveals, however, that Tissot's interpretation is distinct in its sense of confidence and poise, even celebration, as opposed to the atmosphere of lamentation that seems to dominate the depictions of his contemporaries. Gustave Doré's interpretation from his own illustrated Bible, for example, focuses on the morning in the story, showing Jephthah's daughter looking stoically towards the heavens as, she, as her companions take on postures of anguish and despair. Sir John Everett Millais' depiction features the grieving parents on the left of the composition as their daughter exits their presence with her head bowed and her face in her hand, surrounded by concerned companions. Edouard de Barponsan's painting is imbued with a simmering dimension of sexuality, as Jephthah's daughter looks out at the viewer with alluring eyes and her attendants languish around her in misery. Even works that focus solely on Jephthah's daughter seem to emphasize the tragedy of the story. George Elgar Hicks' version depicts her with hands clasped at her, clasped at her chest as she looks towards the sky. Alexandre Cabanel again depicts an almost ghostly Jephthah's daughter with a slightly bowed head and hands up in a gesture of surrender or possibly of hesitation. As I observed these various depictions, there appeared to be a connection between these artists' interpretations and the femme fragile archetype popular in the 19th century. This idealized archetype represented a fabricated category of women who were pure, innocent, and perfect. In fact, such women were considered too perfect to even be a part of this world. Too lovely, too kind, and too pure to remain on earth, they're often misunderstood, poorly treated, and ultimately suffer from a premature but beautiful death. Their weakness and death, often the result of male oppression, uh, seem to contrast sharply with the strength and vitality of men. The pre-Raphaelites were prolific in their illustrations of femme fragile narratives, uh, such as those of Ophelia, Mariana, and the Lady of Shalott. The apparent fragility of Jephthah's daughter in the dominant depictions of this scene from the 19th century seemed to draw on this obsession over the tragic feminine. Additionally, there seems to be a sense of willing submission in many of these works that adheres to the quintessentially Victorian morality. During the Victorian era, womanhood and motherhood were roles raised to iconic, almost divine status. 
Girls were expected and trained to become the central moral figure of the home, beacons of emotional stability, tireless service, and perpetual self-sacrifice. They were to become the angel in the house, a phrase coined in Coventry Patmore's popular poem, which described his wife as this kind of disinterested woman. Men were designated for leaving the home to work in the corrupted outside world, while their wives were responsible for keeping a home free of corruption and for cleansing any moral inconsistencies brought home with her husband. Much of the art produced during this time thus demonstrates the value society placed on these designated roles, including scenes of happily functioning families, portraits of well-behaved little girls, and scenes of female self-sacrifice. Tissot, on the other hand, steps out of these notions and offers a totally different take. He seems to be empowering Jephthah's daughter with a sense of confidence and self-assurance that is absent from many of the interpretations of his contemporaries. He does not appear to be as interested in this weak female archetype. His heroine has a decidedly pigmented complexion in comparison to the typically ghostly femme fragile. She locks eyes with the viewer rather than looking away wistfully. She strikes a confident pose as to her attendance in Tissot's depiction of her with her companions. There's a lack of didactic self-sacrifice or submission. Additionally, by creating a portrait-style depiction, having moved away from his original sketch which showed her dancing with her companions, uh, Tissot seems to be focusing not on a single moment from the narrative, uh, but rather seems to be allowing the work to embody the entire story and the overall persona of Jephthah's daughter. An additional point of interest is that of the elaborate clothing in Tissot's depiction. In comparison to the fashion in Tissot's other Old Testament scenes, Jephthah's daughter seems to be in very ornate clothing. It is possible that these garments are indicative of bridal or betrothal costuming, giving rise to questions over Tissot's interpretation of the text as to whether the fate of Jephthah's daughter was physical sacrifice or the devotion of her life to God's service in the temple or elsewhere. Scholars, of course, have long debated the ambiguity of the text as to what the daughter's fate actually was. To me, it seems possible that the bridal costuming may allude to a mourning of what could have been. It's likely that Tiso would have been aware of theological discussions of this debate, um, and his choice of clothing, I believe, may indicate that he saw Jephthah's daughter as one who devoted herself to God and did not meet a fatal end. Diving into a little speculation, I wonder whether having lost his love and muse, Kathleen Newton, while she was still young, Tissot may have found beauty in celebrating life not taken before its time. Again, it would have been easy for Tissot to project the idea of the femme fragile onto his work, particularly taking into account his experience with his dying companion. Yet, he opts for this vastly different depiction, perhaps a more positive commemoration of his lost love. I've also wondered whether Tissot's rejection of tradition in this depiction may stem back to his foundational career in which he made his name painting women. Perhaps a certain familiarity and respect for women played into his lack of interest in highlighting uh, fragility. In fact, the sense of empowerment evident in many of his works is tempered and balanced by an interest in humanizing the women of the Old Testament, such as in his depiction of Bathsheba. Thus, this empowerment does not appear to be in any way artificial. Rather, it seems to be born of a depth of discernment that indicates that Tissot was willing to go beyond uh, archetypes of his time to uncover characters of greater complexity. Thank you.